Hello, welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Lead. I'm Eric Miller, and today I'm going to show you uh, the beginning of a kind of a massive project for me. I'm, I'm embarking on another locomotive project, and um, it's a little complicated. It's something that I swore I would never do again, but then I kind of got interested in it. So what I'm going to be doing is modeling a bit of a kind of Proto Lance uh, SPSF road switcher. Um, I was going through my roster thinking about it as I do from time to time and I was thinking Okay, so the South Omaha terminal is partly owned by the SPSF. What if the Jeep 9 ever? Um, needs to go in for some heavy repair uh, They would probably contract with the SPSF shops to do that Would the SPSF then send them a kind of backup locomotive uh, for that time if, if it's kind of scheduled heavy maintenance And so I thought yeah, maybe they would and at the same time, I was also thinking, I've, you know, I've always liked Kodachrome locomotives, the SPSF, um, and, and I kind of wanted something beyond just the freight cars to be on my layout. And so I thought it would also be something fun, uh, if anything, just for me to run from time to time. And so then I started thinking about the possibilities. And then I was looking at the fleet that I currently have. And I have, I had two locomotives that were slated for the Union Pacific for the transfer that I have in South Omaha. And I thought, why not turn one of those into the SPSF? Um, and so, as, as you might recall, I'm, I was, my plan was to modernize my UP fleet a little bit. I've got a separate Jeep 38 project um, that I will be showing you in uh, future videos as well. Uh, but then I've also got this U23B. This was the, the lone UP transfer that I had. And so what I'm going to do instead of, of uh, my original plan was to upgrade this into a B23-7 because it's essentially the same chassis. Um, I'm going to instead turn this into a GE Super 7, a B23-S7. These were built in the late 1980s, and they used U23Bs. The Santa Fe had a ton of them. I figure it fits, even though the Santa Fe never did go into the Super 7 program. Um, a couple of the U23Bs did end up, uh, I should say Santa Fe U23Bs, did end up going into that program. And so I thought this would be cool. They also upgraded uh, somewhat famously a U23B that ended up being an SF30B that was rebuilt in their Cleburne shops. Um, but this was at the time when they were just about to close Cleburne shops and uh, railroads kind of stopped rebuilding their own locomotives, going into contract rebuilding. So I figured the Super 7 fits with that. Uh, maybe after the SPSF merger, they say, hey, let's, you know, we want to get some, some better um, road switcher power. Uh, maybe, you know, upgrade some of the um, stuff they were getting, like the older worn out units from the Southern Pacific. And, and so, um, so I, I just figured that kind of fits, even though I'd rather, I, I guess I shouldn't say I'd rather, but I was, I was, I was kind of trying to think of, of a prototype that I could do like a Jeep 39-2 because Athern uh, just came out with those and those are really cool. Um, but I've got this U23B here and I also have a ton of Atlas parts that I bought several years ago to build like B23-8s and Super 7s and uh, what else did I buy these for? Um, just random projects. So I, I thought you know, I could do this pretty cheaply. So what I'm going to be doing is as in this first video I'll show you how I'm building the shell and um, basically what I'm going to do is take a couple of Atlas shells to do this with and what I've got here, this is a B40-8 shell, uh, long hood. This is a B32-8WH. Um, there's a couple different ways to say it. This could be an 840-B. This could be a 32-BWH. Um, it gets kind of crazy with the dash 8 series. Um, but so basically I'm going to take these shells and kind of kitbash them into a Super 7. Now, it's not going to be 100% prototypical because that would be a royal pain in this project is already going to be complicated enough and so I'm just going to do my best to get the length right and to make it look um, look good it's it's kind of going to be maybe like more of a shortened b23-8 um, but I, I think you know this this is one of the things that I've always felt strongly about is that as long as you the modeler is okay with with uh, the level of work the detail that you're putting into a project and that's all that matters um, it doesn't matter what other people uh, tell you and say uh, you need to do your own thing and, and worry about what what looks good to you and so you know so I was asking myself well do I really want to go through with with getting all the detail 100% correct for a super 7 and like no not really um, especially since it's a bit of a fantasy unit you know maybe the SPSF um, 
Maybe this is either an early production unit or a late production unit. Things changed a little bit, uh, so I would be okay with that. And um, after I get the shell done, then I'll take you through the other steps. Uh, so we've got the U23B chassis, which is pretty much done here. Um, but after that, we've got the, the big pain of a paint job to do with the Kodachrome. And I'll show you how that goes. And I've got the new decals that Microscale uh, just came out with where they, they touched up the logos and made them a little bit more accurate. And so I'll show you all that as well. Um, so one thing about painting projects, just to kind of Give, give you a little little info on um, from what I've kind of learned is is sometimes you'll have uh, locomotives that are easy to paint and then hard to decal and then you have others that are hard to paint but easy to decal and so that this fits the latter category and then other times you'll have like my South Omaha Terminal Jeep 9 which is both easy to paint and easy to decal um, but but a lot of times if you want you know really nice uh, looking you know uh, paint scheme that takes some effort like the Kodachrome um, it'll be one one way or the other and so this one is is a challenge to paint because you've got the primer color the silver the yellow and the red and the black and then um, but after that's done the decals are super easy and it looks looks great so um, so I'll take you through all that and then we'll get it up and running so this should be um, at least more than one video segment um, probably I don't know we'll, we'll see how as I go along we'll see how many videos this turns out to be um, but I'll try to do a, a new video on this project every other week. So without further ado, um, we'll start getting into um, cutting up the shell. All right, so first things first, uh, before we start cutting up the shell, I want to go through this. We make sure that we have all the parts that we need for this project. And that's obviously really important to do because you don't want to get you know into it and then realize, oh, I'm missing this piece. And also you want to make sure that you get all the parts that you need um, before other people, other model railroaders out there buy them up. And so um, let's go over everything. So I've got the, the sill. Now these are all parts that I basically bought from Atlas a long time ago. Not sure if they're in stock anymore. There's also a seller on eBay. So much stuff that sells um, a lot of cool Atlas parts that you might not be able to get from, from Atlas directly. And so um, I'll mention his title below. And so anyways, let's go through everything. So we got the sill here, we've got the handrails, we've got the radiator detail. Um, these, if I remember correctly, I did a B23-8 once and I had to cut these up. So we might need another metal piece of that. And I noticed that so much stuff on eBay has these. So we might need to do that. Um, I've got a cab, I've got a nose, um, and then I've got the, the two long hoods that we're gonna use. So I think we've got everything that we need here. I've got some other random parts. Um, like these are some grab irons. Now, when I was doing these a while back, I noticed the grab irons for the, the low short hood here, really hard to find. So I might have to craft my own using some brass wire. Um, and let's see, I also need to make sure we've got the smoke stacks exhaust stacks for these um, but I should be able to if I don't have them I've probably got some other GE hood that I can grab them off of um, but yeah I think that's that's pretty much it but it's always a good idea when you start a project to just do that basic inventory oh and then the other important thing that we're gonna need later I don't need it right now but is the the window glazing so we've got all that here as well um, yeah, so it looks like we've got all of our parts. Like I said, I might try to get some more of those metal radiators, but otherwise, and then I need to find, oh, it looks like I've gosh, got some here, so maybe not. Um, okay, yeah, you never know. I don't know if any of you are like me and you buy all these parts and then you don't start a project and then, but then you use them later and you're like, I don't remember I had all these things. Um, so as long as we find an exhaust stack, then we should be good to go. I've got an air conditioner. I'm gonna use the, plan to use the air horn off this U23B. Um, sunshade should be easy to find. Um, so I think we can scrounge up the rest. Yeah, all right, so now let's get cutting. Now one more important thing that I should note is that it's always good, obviously, to check prototype photos. Um, this is what I was using for some Super 7 images, this Monongahela unit here and here, and this Roberville and Saguenay, I think is how you pronounce it. Th these, uh, there are two of these built for this railroad, if I'm, 
if I remember correctly, maybe there are three, because so I see a 50 and a 52. But anyways, these use Santa Fe units. Um, but anyways, this is this is kind of what I'll what I'll use to start setting up my project and making sure that I've got everything that I need. And um, these are uh, th these are not prototype photos here, but uh, these are really good images that that show you exactly how your um, hood doors need to look. And so that's important stuff when you're doing this kind of detail. And so um, what I'm going to do is it's like I said, very similar to the B23-8 in that there are um, six engine doors and then it's got the shorter, or so six engine doors here, these center things, and then it's got the shorter um, uh, part here. So notice that this on the B40-8 is shorter than this. So what we wanna do is basically cut these out, these eight engine doors, put the six in there and that'll shorten it and that might get us to the length that we need if not we will cut a little bit more okay so for the cutting this is going to be similar to what i did for anyone who's watched my jeep 9 kit bash or like low nose video uh, basically what i do is i just kind of line it up next to a, a line here that i know i want to cut past knowing that i can always file more in and then just basically just start cutting um, I like using, these are just exacto saws. Uh, these work pretty well for projects like this. As long as you're cutting next to a line, this, this will work out pretty straight. And then, like I said, you can always file in a little bit more. So I'm planning to use this uh, for, the, for my shell and this part, and then take this out and then replace it with that. So let's uh, cut these parts and then um, we'll circle back after that's done. Okay, so now we've got our pieces cut here, and this is what we want. We want this six engine door piece to go in the middle. We want the shorter piece here on this end, and I've put up the cab and the nose there, and this piece in the end. So our next job is to file the ends of these and get everything square, and then we can start um, putting it together and lining it up and measuring it and seeing if it matches this or if we need to cut more off. And then the other thing that we'll work on after that is then cutting this, which should be pretty easy because it's just going to be a matter of taking out some of the middle here. Um, but after we get the shell done, then that'll dictate the size of this, but um, pretty much it's going to gonna line up with this. If it's a little bit longer, that's okay. We can always put some um, extended couplers in there, but we want it to be roughly this size. So get these filed up, measured, and check in after that. Okay, a little update here after cutting away. Uh, this is very much a design build project. If I haven't mentioned this, I design a little bit and then I build some and then I design a little bit and build some more. So as I've as I've been cutting away, I uh, measured the from basically from pilot to pilot. The uh, U23B shell is about uh, 56 feet long and maybe like 56 and a half. And the B40-8, um, here is about 62 feet long. And so so that means that I essentially need to cut down almost six feet. And so that's what I've what I've attempted to do with the shell also. And the U23B shell that I'm striving to recreate the, the length on is about 54 feet. So what we've got here is line, everything lined up. This should be about 54 feet. And then we'll um, glue it all together. And then what I also decided to do as I was working on this is I, I'm attempting to do a couple things that will really make this more of a um, Super 7 look than like a B23-8. This will already be shorter than a B23-8, but there's a couple of distinguishing features that I want to incorporate into this to make it look more like a Super 7. And so one of them is um, having this little uh, grill work that will be below um, these two inlets right here and so I've, I've already measured that out and I'm gonna so I'll cut that out and then glue this in here I just grabbed this off of another Atlas uh, GE shell that I had and then on the other side I'm gonna add um, some extra grills that were that are on this side and so those are a couple of distinguishing features the other thing is um, the Super 7 has a bit of a slant on the roof um, from this section going down to where the engine hood doors are and so I'm going to incorporate that and so I've cut this off of another hood and so basically gonna um, glue this in here 
and that'll act as kind of the slope and then I'm just going to put use a little bit of styrene here um, scrap to uh, basically cut out some like triangles and uh, and that'll be basically be the transition now the super 7 actually has if you look really closely actually has more of an angled top although it does kind of have this curve but it's more angled and less curvy and so that's really hard to replicate because I have nothing like that so I'm just gonna use the dash 8 parts I'm okay with that um, but putting these distinguishing features in here will make it look more like a Super 7, um, yet it'll still be a little easier for me to kit bash. And then the other thing I went ahead and took care of is um, these radiator grills on the top here. Um, looking at, a, you know, getting photographs from the top of locomotives is very hard, but looking at some photos that I found, um, it looks like they only have two of these in here. And so we'll go ahead and just do it like that. And then we'll keep this look the same. The Super 7 is obviously a little different, but again, I'm I'm, it's a bit of a compromise between um, preserving the Super 7 look, but also keeping this a somewhat simple kit bash. So, um, so there's definitely some balance that, that you needed to go through with this one. It's not gonna be perfect, um, but I think it'll look really good. Um, it'll have that Super 7 look to it and I'll be pleased with the result. So we're gonna go ahead and glue all this together and then um, cut this to fit. And then I'll show you what it looks like after that. And then basically we'll be done and ready to paint. Um, I'm just gonna, after that, I'll have to go with adding those uh, details, like I mentioned, um, the grab irons, and then, you know, things like air horns and this air conditioner that I've got. So, but we're getting a lot closer. All right, here's what the Super 7 shell looks like after everything's fabricated and pieced together. Uh, as you can see, put the, um, all this, you know, new grill work here, got the kind of slant there. Like I mentioned that it's not hundred percent accurate because of, um, having the angles, um, that it, that the real super seven has and the, um, radiator section back here is not hundred percent. Um, but cut and filed this to fit, um, also made sure while I was cutting the sill, made sure that it was fitting the U 23 B chassis as well. So. Here's what the other side looks like. And a little view of the top there. So one thing I decided to do is go ahead and glue the sill together with the shell. Um, usually I like to keep these apart, especially for painting purposes, but I figured it would help with the integrity of the overall shell and then also um, just help for, you know, in operations and maintenance in the future. It's just a lot easier to have this as a single piece. And then the coupler boxes will keep everything um, together. So this is what the U23B looks like. I had to do a little bit of, of uh, filing here, as you can see on the front and here too, to get the shell to fit on it. Um, but otherwise, this is uh, basically the stock Atlas uh, U23B shell or chassis. So get that back on the track there and then they'll show you so um, here's what the inside of the shell looks like so it's pretty solid um, should hold up pretty well so as you can see I've got some more things left to do obviously you got to put the air horn on got to do like air conditioner and antenna um, you know the the 90s were a simpler era to model so not a bunch of fancy junk on top of the cab but um, need some sunshades and then obviously all the grab irons and then I'll have to figure out the uh, handrails and I'll probably leave those off um, until I paint them um, because it'll, it'll be a lot easier to get to the decals without the handrails there so um, but yeah I'll have to I'll have to cut those to fit this as well so so those will be the next steps um, I'm planning to do another video to show you how to how I paint the Kodachrome paint scheme which is as I mentioned earlier in this video, is a rewarding uh, paint scheme, but it's it's also a, a big pain to do. So, um, but I'll show you a video of how to do that, how I do that. So that's it for for this one. I uh, hope you found that interesting. If anybody wants to tackle a Super Seven in the future, this is one way of doing it. Again, it's not completely 100% accurate. Um, you have to make some compromises, I think, um, unless you want to spend a ton of time. And, and a lot of interesting parts to do it. And a lot of, um, I guess you have to do a lot of styrene work with it too. So, but this is how I decided to tackle it. And as I mentioned, it's got some of the, the base, some of the main features, distinctive features that you find on a Super 7. 
So it should look pretty good running around here on the stockyard industrial lead. So again, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to leave any comments what you want to see on this channel in the future. And I'll see you again next week.